In this video, I'd like to review how we interpret the motion of an object. We would like to be able to uh, predict and interpret uh, position versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs for common situations. Now, in the notes, I've summarized some of the key points for each of the different types of graphs. And in class, we'll go through a number of demonstrations using a motion detector to help you visualize and interpret this linear motion of objects. But for this video, uh, that's kind of hard to show motion detector movement. So I'll be using an interactive simulation from FET called the Moving Man. I'd recommend that you download it uh, now by clicking on the link that's on the screen and press play on the simulation yourself. The link will hopefully take you to this screen right here, and all you need to do is just click on Run Now. Hopefully you have the latest version of Java, and you'll open up that Java animation. The Movie Man animation should look something like this when you finally download it. It has a little man that you can basically move back and forth and plot his position and his velocity and his acceleration. So let's say the little man is placed here at the origin and you decide to have him move towards the house at a constant velocity. So you can put in a number in here, for example, and say I'm going to have him move at one meter per second. And you can just press play and there he is. Now on a separate piece of paper right now, why don't you predict what the position time, velocity time, and acceleration time graphs look like? Once you've drawn your predictions, you can click on the Charts button, and that will pull up another screen that shows you the position, velocity, and acceleration time graphs. Now you can verify your predictions by setting the velocity to one meter per second and pressing play, and you can see the motion being plotted for you. You can make other changes. For example, you can have the little man start at a position of negative eight, and then go at a velocity of one meter per second so that now he'll move from the tree to the house at a constant velocity. And there you go. And notice what has changed now. You have now the y-intercept here on the position graph is starting at negative eight, and yet we have this nice linear function here showing for the position versus time graph. Or let's set the man at 10 meters just beyond the house, but now have a negative velocity of say negative two meters per second and then let's first play and observe what happens now. Notice, I'll just press pause here, that the slope of the graph is now negative. It's still linear because he's going at constant velocity, but it's steeper because we have a larger magnitude of the velocity. Here's another scenario where the little man now starts at a position of negative 10 meters straight by this brick wall and with a starting velocity of zero, but is accelerating at a constant rate towards the house. Let's take a look at what this would look like here. So here you'll notice, hopefully, that the position time graph is curved. Over here, this is in the shape of a parabola. The velocity time graph is linear because it's increasing velocity at a constant rate. And the acceleration is a constant horizontal line at the acceleration that I set. Now let's take a look at this scenario. I start the man again at negative 10 meters, but with an initial velocity of five meters per second. That means when time starts, he's already moving to the right at a speed of five meters per second. And then we have an acceleration of negative one. So what happens is as he's moving to the right, he's going to start to slow down because his velocity and his acceleration are in opposite directions. He'll be essentially decelerating as we say in layman terms. So let's take a look at what happens here. So I press play and he's starting to slow down and eventually comes to a halt right about there. And then in fact you notice that he's turned around because he's still accelerating. So he's eventually going to start to, as I press play here, speed up in the opposite direction that he was moving initially. So you can see over here we have a parabola. Anytime you have, by the way, a curved line in a position time graph, it means the object is accelerating. If the parabola opens up downwards, or as we call it concave downwards, then you will end up with a negative acceleration. If the parabola opens upwards, like concave upwards as we say, then you'll end up with a positive acceleration. 
And by the way, of course, this will be a negative slope here if you have a negative acceleration, and this will be a positive slope here if you have a positive acceleration. There are all sorts of motion that you could plot on this uh, animation. In fact, if you go up to special features up here and click on the expression evaluator, you could type in your very own mathematical expression for the position as a function of time. Here we have x as a function of time equals negative 8 plus 10t minus 2t squared. Now, what equation would you relate that to so that you can understand what each of these numbers mean? Hopefully you're thinking about the uh, position as a function of time equation, kinematics equation. Let me write it out for you. There you go. The negative 8 here represents the initial position. So our little man is going to start over here by the tree. He's going to have an initial speed of 10 meters per second. So he'll be moving to the right with 10 meters per second. And then he's going to have a negative acceleration. Negative 2 represents half of the acceleration. So therefore, the acceleration of the little man will be negative 4. All right, if, you, uh, if we click on play here, we can see what will happen. There we go. And there he's moving to the right, slowing down, and then speeding up in the opposite direction. This is the same thing you would get if you were to throw a ball upwards in the air. When it gets to the top of the path, the ball will stop moving and then eventually start moving back downwards and speeding up. Okay, one last little challenge animation. I'm going to press play and I want you to guess what I have in my expression evaluator. So I'm going to press play. Let you tell me. You just observe the motion and tell me what you think this is. There he is. Now he's slowing down and coming to a halt and then turning around, then eventually coming to a halt again, and then turning around once more. Can you describe what this motion is? We'll be seeing this later on. This is called simple harmonic motion. In fact, you can't quite see it, but not only is the position varying as a sine or cosine curve and the velocity, but if I zoom in here on the acceleration, you'll see that is also varying. And we'll be discussing this later on when we study simple harmonic motion.